one. It's Serena. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Delusions of Grandeur. I am one of your hosts, uh, but uh, uh, let me bring this uh, uh, this meet the past moment uh, uh, month here over to Mosley for uh, his evening to share with us a little bit of about the demented, twisted, deranged films that he has in store for us tonight. So. Let us go to our local video store, pull out exactly what chair it might be available, and listen to what Mo might have to say. So, let us know what film we are going to be going on to discuss tonight. All right, so, uh, you know, as Brandon and Jake would say, we have some high art in store for you this evening. Uh, and tonight's showcase is for the 1987 exploitation splatter classic, Video violence. Uh, it's a shot on video film. It was made by a dude who used to work at a video store. And weirdly, it's kind of a, you know, supposed to be a cautionary tale that <clears throat> goes off the rails and just becomes some type of twisted thing of its own, oh, yeah. you know. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to jump too much into the plot right now. We'll run through that after we do our first impressions. But this movie's pretty special to me. It's uh, very much one that, you know, kind of cemented in my head that you could make just your own little shitty horror film and be successful with it, you know, depending on how you market the shit and what your budget is and how you achieve that stuff. You can, you know, do your little small town horror flick and make enough movie to make a goddamn sequel or make enough money <laughs> on the movie to make a sequel. And that's exactly what happened here, you know. Uh, so, Let's jump into the first impressions here. What, what what was your thoughts on this, Brandon? Oh, well, I had... I don't know why I, I mixed this up with Video Nasties. I, I had thought that one was the one. But uh, when I did get the correct film, <laughs> it was uh, one... I was surprised by how much I liked it because I'd, I'd start, done like Jake did and I started with the first film, but I wasn't... I wasn't quite as worn out as, as he was so i was ready to watch the second film <laughs> and i was very pleasantly surprised by it i really liked it uh another film that reminded me a lot of it was a film called uh, you can't rent here anymore which was a a really awesome kind of horror comedy but more more in the horror than a comedy aspect and this also really came across as that to me. I really yeah, enjoyed sure. it. And I'm sure that You Can't Read Here Anymore was definitely inspired by this film. It just, uh, it's something I'm glad I got to see. I am looking forward to uh, getting some Australian versions of the DVD because the American versions are too freaking expensive. And uh, just... Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, I took those camp video releases for granted, man, and I didn't grab as many of them as I should at the time because there's some that are ridiculously fucking it's, expensive now. Yeah, I know. I still have to track down the basement, which uh, I guess uh, like the print uh, runs are so low. They they don't do huge print runs of these things. Yeah, and I was just really enjoying it. I I enjoyed it for the the tongue in cheek kind of horror that they had in it, and. Uh, it just it bordered on a horror comedy, but still managed to hold up as a horror. It was uh, to me, it exemplified the old school, uh, low budget horror film. Hell yeah, dude! It is like the epitome of the shot on video horror generation, you know, because mm -hmm. that was a thing. Uh, if you're not aware, during like you know, especially like the mid '80s through to like I'd say like '91, '92, '93 in there, there's still remnants of that shit afterwards where it was yeah. successful because the home video market was still around, but I think the boom of it was like, you know, that first period up till the very early 90s. So you saw a lot of this stuff, like Blood Cult, or Wood Chipper Massacre, mm -hmm. or Splatter Farm, or things like that, that, you know, it could be successful and actually make them quite a decent amount of money so, to make their next film just by being put into regional video stores. And because people were so hungry for home video back then, they would go crazy and rent the shit out of this stuff. And, and, you know, a lot of these became like regional legendary films. I'm sure Don Dohler got plenty of that mm -hmm. action. 
it's it was just a great time to be making independent low budget horror films. I think probably comparable to like the maybe the sixties and the seventies where they were just always cranking those things out. You know what I mean? Oh um, yeah. It never really stopped through the eighties at all, but it's you know there's a weird shift there where it became where anybody could just make their own movie and put it into mm -hmm. these video stores and oh, make yeah. enough to make like a trilogy like that dude that did zombie bloodbath well i did want to do one shout out before i uh before i give it over to dave's impressions which is just uh which would be to kyle rapaport he does uh he's uh movie buff one on youtube but uh he's the person i first heard about this film from because he's huge into uh shot on video horror and uh i just uh it wasn't until now that i had the interest in watching it all the way because i didn't want to try and put out the money to buy a copy right <laughs> yeah, and that's understandable man it's, it's unfortunate that out of print stuff but you know uh, so what about you dave when did you you know, first hear about this, and and what are your impressions of it as as well? Well, I started collecting uh, uh, some of the camp uh, pictures when I first started coming across them in video stores, and uh, uh, you get you have to understand something about uh, about me first. I am a collector first, and then uh, it's like it takes me a couple of years to get to watching some, uh, <laughs> things that I collect, so. It's just a matter of sitting down and watching uh, watching them. And half the uh, time, especially since I've got uh, a, a lady of the house that tends to be 50-50 on watching these independent films with, uh, with me, it's more or less my hobby. <laughs> um, but uh, There are some that I can get her into and some that I can't. So, uh, so oftentimes I'm watching them on my own. So... This is actually my first time watching these on my own. Um, I do know and have worked with people that have worked uh, or at least worked alongside the director of this film. So, uh, so, uh, uh, so when, it, when I did acquire this copy, I think I might have acquired it from my friend Brad Twig because uh, oftentimes he'll turn around and uh, sell me his collection <laughs> and uh, fund his films uh, in in retrospect. So, um, but hey, now you got to get it done somehow, you know. <laughs> seeing it, uh, seeing it the first time, and I actually was able to watch at least half of the second one um, before the show. So, oh, that sequel is something special to be sure. <laughs> uh, so, what do you think of the first one, though? You know, what's your what's your first impression of that, baby? Well, I like the idea, idea that you can, uh, you can actually, uh, uh, that, okay, people can really get into watching horror. And h how the fu uh, uh, fuck he just came up with, uh, with the idea that, okay, this entire town, <laughs> um, it can be a whole society of people watching specifically uh, as home videos, you know, uh, it may, as something that can may, be made in your basement. Okay, let's let's bring that person over here. Let's kill him, you know. Right. That, that kind of thing. Roll tape. <laughs> well, dude, and that interestingly plays into the origin of the movie itself. I mean, the the well, let's run down the details here real quick. This movie's called Video Violence. It's shot on video horror film from 1987. Uh, it was directed and written by Gary Cohen. And it stars Gary Schwartz and, you know, some other people that you, you've never heard of because they're local actors. Uh, it was distributed by Camp Video and it came out in 1987. Uh, it was basically born from this encounter that he had as a clerk working in a video store. I think it's Golden Age Cinema or something like that is the hmm. name they give on, on Wikipedia. And he talks about it in the special features if you ever, you know, get a chance to check those out. But... Um, Basically, this lady came in and she was, you know, prior to that, he was like a big film buff and he was <laughs> bummed that everybody was super into horror films and not like classic cinema or high art, you know, <laughs> and the people that were coming into the video store just rented slasher films and basically what goes on in the movie. Uh, and there's an exchange in the movie that is actually the origin of the idea for the movie that they recreate 
where this lady comes in and she asks about the movie I Dismember Mama and if it's rated R for nudity. And he says, no, it's probably for all the violence. And she's like, all right, that's fine. The kids can watch it. You know? <laughs> and just that interaction with that woman made this dude be like, that's fucked up. You know, well, there yeah. could be like a movie about people like that, you know, where it's, they <laughs> well, just I've heard that before. Go ahead. I mean, I've heard that before. It's happened before. So oh, yeah. It's, it's it's entirely strange how people used to, and still do, fucking seem to not mind nudity, but violence is somehow okay. Like, naked yeah. people are naked people. You know, violence is something else. I mean, as much as I like to, you know, be a, a advocate for horror films, like, come on, that's some weird thinking, you know? Uh, but that's basically the origin of the movie, and essentially the plot of it is this dude, Mr. Emery, is running this you know video store in this super small town. Uh, he's new to the town, new to the video store, and it's thriving, but he notices that people only rent horror movies, and everybody in the town seems to have a VCR, which it only makes sense that that's weird because it's like you know back then when not everyone had a VCR all the time, you know. Uh, and one day a tape gets returned uh, in place of one of their tapes is someone's blank tape from their private collection, obviously. Uh, you know, what did you guys think of that tape? Oh, well, I mean, I actually liked how they, how they did that sort of almost game show like uh, quality to the, initial killings i think it was like two of them that they did similarly to that and then they kind of branched out after that to different styles but uh i did like how they went to those yeah howard and eli that's our introduction to those oh, guys yeah. who are like you know seem to be our main murderers throughout most of the film uh <laughs> what about you dave what do you think of howard and eli well um Howard and Eli are some interesting characters because uh, they, they did ha have kind of that game show personality, as uh, Brandon uh, did say here. And uh, they seem to relish in uh, the videotaping and the deaths of these people. So uh, 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 to me, the excitement of Howard and Eli are kind of what bring about the film. In a, a sense, they're, they're part of the, uh, shall I say, um, charm of the film. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I love Howard and Eli. Um, they're almost too good, actually. <laughs> uh, but basically, you know, they watch this murder and, you know, one of the video store employees n recognizes the guy being killed as the postmaster. Uh, and he's kind of the one that sort of turns Mr. Emery on to this idea that the people around here seem kind of fucked up. Like, there's no cable. They don't allow <laughs> any type of satellite dishes or anything like that. Yeah, They're they all just stuck the watching videotapes. And the only thing they want to see is violence, you know, uh, which would be kind of weird. Like, no yeah. one ever comes and rents the other tapes. After a while, yeah. I, once you notice that, you would be like, damn. That's weird. <laughs> Um, you know, the other th uh, thing that, uh, th that, you know, if I were really thinking about it, is how the hell can, uh, can a sheriff not know how to work a VHS uh, uh, thing in his own uh, town, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, apparently, they're supposed to be able to look at prime suspects and shit like th uh, uh, that on or and do video presentations. Oh, we'll get to that. We'll get, we'll, get, we'll get to that bad boy. Um, but yeah, they see this murder and obviously, you know, they go to the police station and talk to the sheriff. What do, what do you guys think about the that sheriff? <laughs> the sheriff is the one that uh, is the one character that oh, by the way, if y'all haven't figured it out, spoilers, uh, potentially. Uh, but uh, if the sheriff's one of the few characters I look at in the movie and I have to wonder whether he's in on it or he's just that incompetent and lazy. But that that's the that's the thing is he's the only one that I feel like is on the line of I'm not sure. I know his deputy's on is in on it, but he he seems le legitimately just like I just want to sit around and do nothing. 
And then when you yeah. make me do something, I'm just going to screw it up. <laughs> yeah, small town sheriff shit. And it's, it's, he really is what makes you kind of wonder at first, especially if like it's more than just one or two people. Yeah, like no. maybe they did just get a murder tape and he's like, that's insane. You know, you know, uh, this whole world that um, Gary sets up for us uh, kind of reminds me of like the town of Nilbog. <laughs> it's super small and weird. Like the police station is that little like church building. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Nilbog is also used in uh, one other independent uh, director's uh, yeah. uh, films that Brandon and is I. Is it the know. same town? Because no, um, actually, Brandon, why don't you explain a little bit more? Well, Johnny Johnson does like to, or John Johnson, depending on how you, which movie, likes to utilize Nilbog in many of his films. Uh, he had it in uh, the remake of Plan 9 from Outer Space, I believe, as well as the four skeleton key movies, for better <laughs> or for worse. Uh, still, uh, they are interesting. <laughs> but yeah, the, I mean, actually... The other thing that this reminds me of, town-wise, is uh, the town in Hot Fuzz. I, I could see that a little. Well, there's just something slightly suspicious under the surface. Right. <laughs> and if you look at the plot of Hot Fuzz, which I won't ruin totally, uh, it, it kind of jives with that. If you add that and then combine it with a couple other elements, yeah. <laughs> well, and dude... Uh... You know, I love the touch of the fact that they have like their own operators and stuff that intercept mm -hmm. phone calls from people. And I think it's shortly after that this that we see some of the first examples of that because he takes this, you know, tape to the or I don't think he even takes the tape at first. He comes and gets the sheriff and then he comes back to the video store and the tape has been replaced. Like whoever put it there came back and replaced it with just a home video. So this sheriff is pretty well convinced <clears throat> that this guy is just fucking with him. I love the way he says that. If you're fucking with me, uh, that's like one of my favorite parts. <laughs> of the movie. Uh, and so this just kind of confirms it to the sheriff. And he's like, look, I believe you saw what you th believe that you saw what you saw, but it's probably a prank that like your employee, you watched it with this pulling on you. <coughs> and uh, so they hold on guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I kind of uh, got the feeling that uh, this cop was <laughs> not really there. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, where was I? Oh, Are you uh, talking about the police officer? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's he's pretty much over, the, over his shit at that point. He thinks that he's yeah. just, someone's fucking with him. So he's, he's ready to go back and just do nothing. And uh, basically, you know, after that, like, we... Uh, what exactly happens right after that, actually? Well, he, he does the investig... He gets his wife in on it to do the investigation. That's the part, yeah, where she tries to call and see if this male guy yeah. is actually dead. Because he also noticed his, like, assistant it's is not that missing. She gets her. She actually suggests uh -huh. that, uh, to do it. She actually, mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, because she thinks he's full of shit, basically yeah. from the get go, and so she's trying to just reassure him that nothing's going on. So she calls, and it is a bit weird that like she can't just get outside reception without calling the operator, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and that's where we kind of are let in on the fact that there's definitely some people in the higher ranks of this tiny small town that are <laughs> you know controlling some some of the flow of information here so that people can disappear and people in the town will think that they're fine they move to florida or something mm -hmm. you know? uh, and then you know pretty quickly it's it's sort of revealed that uh the whole town is basically in on this shit you know everybody uh, is is uh, part of it and uh. there's that whole grand sequence at the end uh but there's a lot of this dude trying to just convince this cop of some shit. Like eventually he yeah. gets a tape where, you know, the, his employees like murdered inside of his store. 
Mm-hmm. And and they're basically sending this as a warning, like shut the fuck up and rent the tapes, I think. And kind of like a shakedown. Yeah. Well, yeah, the tape was the a lot of the tape I think was planted there on purpose to see to kind of test him out and see how he and his uh friend would react. But if you notice the uh they actually even said that they didn't they didn't uh, want to have to do that when they were trying to kill the the a store like assistant because you know I mean they they weren't intending to kill both of them off at that point in the movie <laughs> but uh, but sometimes it just it has to be that way <laughs> yeah yeah and we once again get Howard and Eli doing the job I like how he's pulling them through the store and he's like no pull him over here. <laughs> yeah, no, not there here. And they kill him right in front of an April Fool's Day poster. Oh, yeah. Which, uh, even if the cop had seen it, he probably would have, because he's a cop, been like, oh, look at that. It's a joke, you know? Uh, but he basically takes this cop, this tape, to the back to the police station and talks to the sheriff. And he's trying to show him the tape. And he what, doesn't he record over it? Yeah, he hits the record button instead of the uh, play button. See, I just have a hard time believing that somebody who owns and runs a video store wouldn't notice that immediately. Like, yeah. Or why would he be trying to play the tape himself? The sheriff oh, he wants to work. Him, yeah. He did try. He did try. Yeah. And he, he said, uh, just let me do it. It's my machine. You know? So, uh, so he did I'd try. He still would have been watching, I think. You know? <laughs> you, you, you'd think he would have been watching. But either way, he ends up recording over the tape, and the sheriff is just like, get the fuck out of my office or some shit. You know? uh, so he definitely does not have the support of the police department because they th- just think that he's crazy. you know. And his wife, I think, still kind of half thinks he's crazy until they start putting she's, it all together. She's you know? starting to get uh, get a little fri- uh, frightened. Uh, yeah, she's getting on board herself a little bit by that point in the shit. And uh, what do you guys think of his wife as a whole? I used to really not like her as a character, but the more I've watched the movie, it makes sense that she would think it was kind of weird. And well, she's just, the grounded one. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to uh, th- think of his backstory. Supposedly, he left I- his theater co- uh, company, and she left her job uh, for them to start anew in this ta- uh, town. And obviously, business is good for uh, for them. It's not that because uh, um, they're they're making s- uh, sales and obviously they're making money at the end of the d- day and that's what she s- uh, s- uh, said well, what are you complaining about you know I mean yeah. uh, I mean we could just not be making anything you know so um, yeah I think I mean, she said we could have moved to a town where only three people had VCRs or something like that it's totally true uh, but his goddamn employee went missing and he's been getting tapes of murders so uh, well if you heard uh, heard it uh, heard it the way that he was explaining it would you think that he was exactly sane uh probably not i mean not at first maybe but after <laughs> I mean, the second one where his employee gets strangled out and he's still missing after like two not, days and if you were hearing it from uh, uh, from the man himself knowing that you are the psychologist that you are what would you think i don't know there was a time when uh, in the movie i was looking at it and i saw him himself just trying to question it's like am i really like seeing these things or, or am i just going crazy <laughs> because again uh, they're pretty damn good about disappearing people and getting yeah. all coordinated so that first time it's almost as if it didn't happen <laughs> and uh, so it really is it's really that that hard time where even that guy was guessing you know second guessing it would be one of those cases where i'd be like okay let's just see the tape and we can do that and then when he shows the tape and he's like showing home movies or the blank tape of course then you go hmm. <laughs> right uh, one until the vampire one that she realized oh crap this is real <laughs> Yeah, and in the very least, I can see up until after his employee's death, where you could see it as like a prank. But then, you know, he doesn't really get anything else after that. I don't think until that second tape's delivered later. Uh, but I think this is the point where we get the whole sequence, isn't it? Where 
like the deli people murder all those folks, mm -hmm. right? Or wait, no, uh, didn't they have the uh, the hitchhiker first? Um, the yeah. hitchhiker mm -hmm. girl, where uh, where uh, they kind of oh just yeah. We get the second installment of the Howard and Eli show, which becomes an actual thing in the second movie. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, what's that, Brandon? Oh, I was saying, yeah, that, I think that was just like, I swear that particular murder was more of an aside and just something extra they wanted to throw in for, for all those of us who just really enjoy the whole torture violence aspect of the film. <laughs> right. You know, well, and Howard and Eli are too good Howard, not to shoot multiple, you know. Oh, yeah. No, the okay. way that the Howard and Eli show uh, seems to me is just as elaborate as the, uh, the way the theatrical entertainer in Blood Freak, or Blood sucking freaks who mm. <laughs> went on about his torture show, uh, so, yeah. uh, st uh, stage. Uh, because, Sardu? Uh, uh, b yes. Sardu and his dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And, but, yeah, it's great, dude. It's showmanship, you know? Yeah. And in the second one, well, I'll just spell it out right now, Brandon. In Video Violence 2, Howard and Eli have a cable access show, and that's Ooh. what the, that's what the, you know, so it's just <laughs> and insanity real, you know. I I need to see it. I've got, now that I've got a hold of it, but I, I feel like I should get those physical copies that I thought. <laughs> As a horror well, movie, I, this is I a did. better movie. But Video Violence Two is probably more fun, just because it's Howard and Eli <laughs> being crazy the entire oh. time. And <laughs> wow, I love stuff. the general insanity. When you're talking about the deli scene, which follows. The deli scene to me is them really hitting home the the idea that the entire town, because you would suspect it, that yeah, there's some corroboration, but I feel like the deli scene was just their way of saying, oh yeah, just just to make sure in case you didn't get it. <laughs> well, right, and you see yeah. Yeah, everybody, even the grandma that accepted the call for what's his name, Rick or whatever the employee. Oh, yeah. Uh, she's even there, like as part of it. There's a, mm -hmm. a, a clear sheriff's deputy, like watching. Oh God! And I love fucking Howard's outfit with like the butcher jacket and that <laughs> floppy hat as he's going up to stab that girl. Yeah, because at first he was going for the home improvement look, but uh, but then. Uh... <laughs> oh, they got mad drip, man. Their style is fucking awesome through this movie <laughs> and in the second one. They're both their wardrobe is impeccable. Uh, it's. It's and then it gets crazier from there. You know, you go into the store where they've poisoned these random like passerbys with with lemonade, and then well, sliced and them up as it. as deli meat. Basically, it looked like liver sausage or some shit that the, uh, at first that they it, were. It looked tasty. Like, Whatever you slicing up, the actual meat, I would have probably <laughs> ate it. <yeah. laughs> but uh, to yeah. me, the scene kind of shows how. If this dude had taken the first warning, he probably could have been let in on this whole thing because he's a yeah. local. Because they really are only like, well, no, it does say that they they're killing locals. I don't know, man. I was trying to interpret it in some way that that like, because why keep giving them these warnings? I, I, I guess maybe to just scare them, you know. Well, my thoughts were uh, were if they could uh, uh, could have just. Let it be, and not go to the cops for uh, or anything like that. Uh, that just turn the blind eye. Yeah. They could have been accepted by the uh, by the good folks of wherever they uh, they, <laughs> they are, because you don't know exactly where they are entirely. Uh, you no wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Right? I think he says something like dog shed at one point, but I don't know what the fuck that means. I don't know if that met, was like some like slur for hillbilly towns or if it was... <laughs> I, I don't know what he was saying. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean... Uh, to me, it did seem like they were trying to warn them off, was my point, you know? I so it's like... After, after he'd gone to the cops, yeah, that, that, that's when they were trying to, uh, to warn them, uh, them off. But they were coming in there and just dropping them VHS tapes uh, 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 off uh, to, uh, to have people see uh, see them and shit. Uh, uh, and... You know, everybody was into the uh, them horror uh, uh, films, and then one. Well, day I get the idea. There was like some type of tape trade going on in this town. <laughs> I think it's around this time too, where we get 
the whole sequence where that guy's like digging around in his backyard and then he comes in and watches one of the tapes. Yeah. Uh, which uh, tape was that? A slice of life of uh, oh, some of the other people in town that are enjoying the uh, home video tapes. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I forget what sequence though comes when that guy's like sitting there watching it and he's like, "Yeah, it, this is awesome." It, it, it's because um, evidently he's getting rid of the evidence of the bodies, it, 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 and so he comes back and uh, and comes and because everybody's in. Everybody's in on it, man. I mean, uh, 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 to me, the local butcher shop has their own cleanup crew. So, uh, so they <laughs> they oh, end dude. up bringing uh, uh, bringing the guy in. He <clears throat> up the uh, the burial ground, and then uh, he's like, oh, "I'm done for the day. Okay, let's go back and watch the killing shit." Yeah, yeah. Uh, how that's do they what know that uh, that they're not uh, putting it in as the deli meat. I mean, they, they already sliced up part of that arm, uh, so maybe they're making them into bologna, and then that's uh, that's what the town is eating as their regular. Like liver sauce, maybe. Like ham at the end of the day. Dude, I love that they cut his wife's <laughs> meat with the same deli slicer later, like when <laughs> she came in there for groceries. Uh, but yeah. I can't remember what the the sequence that dude's watching on the couch because I always laugh so hard at him. He's just like, yeah. That's good. Like just the way he's shaking his head and watching it and drinking his beverage. Uh, oh yeah, I think it's another one of those shows. Another one of their shows. Oh, that that remember. was probably that whole sequence there. Oh, then, that's the hitchhiker sequence. Yeah, no. yeah. Um, and yeah. then I think the only other tape we get after that is when he finally shows his wife. Uh, what's it? The vampire takes a bride. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, uh, if you look at that uh, uh, that. Uh, um, production com uh, company. Um, it's called Lil Zach Productions. That is, in fact, uh, the director's production company. So, oh, nice. Um, uh, 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 before it went on to Camp Video, which is what Camp Motion Pictures <laughs> when it was on VHS. They were doing the Lord's work there for a while, man. Uh, <laughs> it's And you can still buy some of the, the stuff from them, but yeah, how, in fact, uh, so, uh, some of their VHS titles were The Incredibly Strange Creatures Who Stopped Living and Became Mixed Up Zombies, Slime oh, yes. uh The Thrill Killers, Rat Fink Abubu, Woodchipper Massacre, Wood Fucking... Storm, Cannibal Hookers, Woodchipper ma Massacre, oh, that was one of them. School. Yeah, Zombie Chef from Hell. <laughs> so Good times. The yeah. titles that were on the uh, the uh, gourmet shelf of Camp Video at the time, so I'm glad. I'm glad that some of these uh, ended up seeing light on DVD. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. People needed to see this. Uh, I don't know, but I think after that point, uh, what do you guys think of the Vampire Takes a Bride? I like his reaction. It's like, well, this certainly is higher uh, production value than I'm used to seeing from these. <laughs> I like his reaction at first. Because uh, it doesn't look like the others. It definitely looks very different. It's not just I'm going to go kill them. It's like they decided, no, we, we, need, to, uh, we need to have more plot. <laughs> Yeah, it's just kind of there, and it's very drawn out, and that's actually probably the only part of the movie that I've never, I don't enjoy. Yeah. Well, it's explained later as to why they did it that way, but uh, it's it's still it's just a, it doesn't quite fit with the rest of the videos. It I do doesn't. like that they do give an explanation later, at least, which is good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I kind of like how. Uh, how uh, everything kind of turned up where, you know, it was somewhat explained by the uh, one chick that they followed to, uh, to, the, uh, to the home. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't want to glaze over that part. They eventually do meet, like, a fellow out-of-towner, I guess, but she has, like, connection to the town. I th doesn't she say her aunt lives there? Yeah. Yeah. So her aunt's probably in on this heinous shit. Uh and you know, it turns out that this lady like noticed the same thing that her husband's noticed, and that all these people are kind of whacked out, and like their idea is watching sn of a good time is watching what appears to be snuff films. 
you know, but she thought they were fake, obviously. Uh, and, you know, so this lady is telling them all this shit, and she's like, I could maybe borrow one of these tapes for you, like, you know, one that hasn't been delivered to you. And so you can check out what's on it, you know. And then immediately after that, Howard and Eli kidnap her, you know. Uh, and they follow him out there to, like, this, what, what the hell is that place that they take him to? They take, um, they follow them to a house that uh, uh, seems like it's in the boonies somewhere in town, uh, maybe off the beaten path. Yeah, it, um, it felt like it was like some type of like, I don't know, like a, some, I don't know how I would describe that. It felt like, like a flower? Yeah, yeah, some type of weird, like advanced, I don't know what the hell that would be for, though. It looked like it would have been for like, you know, grain or something like that, the way the cellar was built. Oh, more like the bottom of a silo or something like that? Something, yeah, it had that oh. kind of vibe, at least to me. It could have been an old root cellar because uh, if you go to some of the older houses, especially in the Midwest or somewhere out there, some of those big root cellars that they've had out there, some of them are right huge. I mean, of course, if you if you see the basement that I'm in, I mean, that's got more than enough room to make that stuff a, a studio or whatnot. Um, so yeah, it depends. I mean, just could have been somebody getting his finished basement done. It was a, it was quite a cavernous, you know, place. Uh, but then basically, you know, this is where I think, aren't we kind of left with thinking that they're made into one of those videos too? <laughs> yeah. Well, they show it at the end. Well, they don't show the whole, but they, they get to show the results of it at the end. See, and that's made very confusing if you watch the entirety of Video Violence too. I don't want to give any of it away, but... Uh, yeah, definitely. You're going to want to check it out, Brandon. I think you'll enjoy it. Because it, it, when they end it with the coming attractions, because, of course, they, the out-of-towner <laughs> who, who is, part, is in on it, uh, she ends up taking over the video store, and uh, yep. she's telling people, look at the com look at the uh, video. We got a new one up here, and it's you know coming attractions, and it's uh, all about that. Now all those tapes are just out in the open. Yep, they're just renting <laughs> snuff films to people, you know. And that plays into the whole slogan of like when renting's not enough, like a, a, if it, you know, you need that that realism of people well, actually getting murdered, you know. Plus, it, pl it plays into the whole uh, gorge uh, genre of people, why people love it, you know, um, or uh, you know, as, as, uh, why people love seeing people get killed. <laughs> I know? guess, yeah. I mean, he was very clearly, you know, concerned about that shit, and I think he tried to maybe make the the most violent movie he could to sort of sort of wake people up. But all it did was appeal to fucking degenerates like us. You know, <laughs> so it's, it, it's just. I think that was that backfired a bit. Because with the, go ahead. It's movie about about the violence in video uh, uh, videos without exactly trying to scare you off from the videos <laughs> so well it, it definitely inspired a lot of future filmmakers in my opinion it may not have but i'm sure that a lot of these films were very much inspired by this i mean people going to their video store in the 80s renting this stuff then going i'm going to make something like that one day and then yeah you know, <laughs> Yeah, it definitely has, you know, uh, connection to things that, you know, branch out from it for sure. I mean, I think a lot of shot on video movies actually followed this too because people saw video violence and will just tell you it was one of the things. They were like, yeah, I saw that. And I was like, I could do some shit like that. Uh, <laughs> see, if we were all like the age we are now back then, we'd have probably made some shit like this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, shoot, cable access. Uh, I'm sure that half of us would have had a, sh a, a show on cable access back in those days. Oh, for sure. And I mean, even this movie, they shot it on a VHS camcorder. You know, uh -huh. it's it's not shot on any type of fancy 
rig or anything like that. That's that's what made them so affordable to make. And there's tons of good ones. Uh, maybe not as good as this, and that's probably why it's like the main example I think of when I think of these types of films. But uh, it's definitely something that people should see just to maybe get a taste of what shot on video horror can be like too. Oh, yeah. I mean, me and my friends, when I was younger, my uh, my grandmother owned a real estate office and she had gotten a VHS camcorder that she never understood how to use. So I learned how to use it for her to help her make films of the houses, but that also gave me full use of the VHS camcorder. Oh, so yeah. I was like, heck yeah, I could do stuff with that. And since I was really into mystery science theater at the time, uh, me and some friends actually got together. We started making uh, mystery science theater videos. That's amazing. I'd love to go back and see those. <laughs> and we did like some. Uh, we did a lot of these old ones, like arsenic and old lace. We did a Godzilla movie. We did. Uh, we did a whole bunch of them, and uh, even did a more modern ones because, again, you know, there was no YouTube to take it down. We would do it, right. copy the tapes, and then sell them in school because it was just, you know, uh, people were finding them funny. It's amazing, dude. Because we had our own oh, scenes damn. and stuff. I got I, the, I still have the rips of them somewhere, but I haven't been able dude, to find them since I moved. You have to at least share those with us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> He's like, oh, it's <laughs> really, really bad stuff. <laughs> I'm sure it would be adorable, though, man. That's what that, like, uh, that little pookle doll I have on my show is uh, from. Uh, I use that as one of the remnants of that uh, of that old show. That's 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 sick, dude. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I guess if you guys had to give people the short and skinny of it on video violence, what would be your your recommendation for this? Or what? what just you know, throw it out there. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. I think Do you if love you, it? Do you hate it? Fucking, would you recommend it? That's basically. Oh, I like it, and I think that I would definitely recommend to anybody who likes uh, shot on video horror, and anybody who's okay with low budget horror films in general. I think that you can get a kick out of this. It's not uber gory. It's not super bad. It's got some vague. It skitters on the outside of those torture elements. <laughs> It doesn't do it to the point where it causes trouble. I would definitely yeah. recommend this film to uh, uh, to, to those who uh, who like uh, films that, uh, that unlike like Herschel Gordon Lewis or um uh, are uh, films that are uh, just made to be kooky just uh, just for the sake of being kooky. I mean. Uh, the, the the fact that you know uh, they're doing it all, you know, in in pure fun, you know, uh, uh, just for the sake of showing some gore and, uh, and uh, trying to scare uh, scare off uh, uh, perspective uh, um, townsfolk, you know, I mean, uh, but still keep their own snuff films going on, you know. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, and Howard and Eli definitely like border on or definitely cross the line into mean spirited as fuck. Yeah, uh, but it's done with that relish and that uh, that shit's almost too good to me. <laughs> well, and again, they don't uh, they don't come across as they come across as, of course, uh, sociopaths, but they also come across as. The kind of people that you have fun with and have a good beer with on a Friday night when they're in with the locals. Exactly. Especially that, in the second one. Where they hack you to pieces. Uh, exactly. Well, that's the thing is that, you know, if you're, <laughs> you're in the local and you're going along with the rules, they're your best friends. I mean, they're like the celebrities in town. So <laughs> you're glad you know them. And then they're like, you know, they're, and they're, like I say, I think that they're the kind of people that they enjoy, ha you enjoy having that beer with if you are one of the people who enjoys <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and dude, like those guys, I think are the one element of this movie that if it had been put into a bigger budget movie, uh -huh. it still would have been just as effective. You know, these guys are like, like the they nailed it. They were fucking oh, yeah. thrown these in. Like Howard like is in that role for sure. You can these tell guys... that in that moment where he's walking up with that floppy hat <laughs> and he puts the knife behind his back. Like that guy was fully going for it in that. 
whole role, you know. These guys are like Doctor Dale versus Evil of of this time period. Dude, I feel like they exactly, (laughs) you know, and uh, they're they're working below their pay grade in this movie for sure. (laughs) Especially when you see the second one, it's like holy shit, these guys became those characters in a pretty awesome way for like low budget, you know, shot on video stuff. Oh, they got the charisma. They're 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 they're, def- they're my favorite characters in the film. Though sure. I did kind of like the the guy who was with the video store owner for the first part. He kind of reminded me a little bit of Randall uh, from Clerks. He's pretty cool, <laughs> Rick or whatever. Yeah, he, he didn't last very long, but uh, he wasn't because he wasn't like unlike Randall. He wasn't shirking off his duties. But he was the—he was just kind of a guy that you like shoot the shit with and like uh, just yeah. enjoy movie talk when you're there. For sure. <laughs> uh, one element of the movie I think we would be, you know, missing an opportunity if we didn't mention is like how it's probably worth multiple watches just to see how many old movies you can spot on the shelves of the the video store that they did it in. Um, <laughs> Incidentally, the the movie that they use in the scene where they recreate it with the lady and the baby, uh, where she asks about the nudity and stuff, yeah, Blood Cult. I I do have a review for that on my channel if you want to check that out. So, uh, (laughs) Blood Cult from 1985. It's good stuff. Jacka Master Studios. Look it up. Uh, I don't know. That video store itself, though, just brings me crazy nostalgic vibes. It reminds me of our video store that used to be just down the hill from my house. So, there might be a few video stores that we used to have around here too, as though it could have been anywhere. To be honest, uh, I mean, you go into the thing, it's be kind, we rewind, you know. <laughs> oh, we used to have one of those rewinders that uh, that. Oh, <laughs> oh, I still got one. <laughs> I still have one. Uh, Actually, I think I have one that's very similar to the one that uh, Eli is using later on when they're like setting up for another take, that little taper winder. Yeah, one of those. Um, I don't know, man. I just think this movie is great because it's like such a shining example, too, of how something could, like this could be successful back then. Like I said, you know, beginning of the discussion, uh, this dude made this. And if you watch the special features, I think he touches on how like all he cared about was getting some video store distribution because he didn't spend much to make it. So if he could get it into those video stores back then, it could be a thing. And that happened at first. And then he was looking for somebody to distribute it. And the reason he chose camp was just because they, they said that they would do a poster for the movie. Oh, and like he, I'm pretty sure he just basically wanted one. You know? <laughs> so he, he was like, yeah, okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah, there you go. He's making money off of it at least till camp stopped distributing it. You well, know, uh, the thing that I heard about uh, about the director of this uh, this film supposedly he was making a documentary for uh, for thirty years of this being uh, in existence, or at least having a cult following, or something like that. Oh and my god! Movie. If if we got the similar treatment to like fucking Darkness, the vampire version, that would be amazing. <laughs> he was uh, making something. I, I was watching a documentary on on, on him because him, evidently he he had actually had a double feature. Uh, presentation of this film at a drive-in play, uh, place, and he actually made like uh, these video violence pins that you, uh, he passed out to. I like, believe I've seen like, those in in horror groups and shit. For sure. um, and he sa- uh, sa- uh, said that he was currently making a video, uh, a documentary about you know why it's the most talked about uh, um, SOV and what uh, and how it's been around for 30 years so it, yeah it it, it, to see if uh, there is or eventually does happen um, I'm not sure how long ago it, that video was made but it, it was I was watching it before we came on the show and nice we evidently were talking about it so 
Yeah, I mean, it's a, it'd be cool to see something else done with this. It definitely deserves it, especially when you take the second one into account. I mean, this dude, you're right. It totally is like the first you know, maybe you find out about when you start getting into shot on video horror because oh, it's yeah. the obvious one to lead the charge, you know? At least that's how I kind of went about it. And I found out about this shit and all the stuff we've talked about, you know? Well, uh, you take you take these things for granted, really, a lot of them, and they end up uh, disappearing. People, you look at the video stores and they're all over the place. And I, I really hope that this finds more distribution because... Only the word of mouth really is how you get to it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, people who have the tapes, I mean, shoot, they're not even streaming the movie. Amazon Prime, who is like, yeah, screw physical, just uh, stream <laughs> it, has no stream. You can't Hell, even rent first, it. I think Arrow should take some of these shot on video. Ooh, dude. Oh, yeah, shot on video <laughs> collection. That made my and nipples hard just you whole, mentioning it. Holy shit. <laughs> create a whole different line for all of these older shot on video films. I mean, look what they did for the Mutilator. I mean, that was kind of a... They could call it like crossbow video or something like that. <laughs> yeah, something. I mean... Because that's, they, like, they, less skillful than a fucking archer, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, they, or, or Lionsgate could still uh, still bring, uh, bring back their Vestron video titles. So, uh, so I mean, it's it's up, it's up to them, really. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know, man. Do you guys have, like, a favorite scene in the movie? That's probably something we should get out the way before we... I have to say the part where, uh, where they're taking the hand and... Uh, uh, grinding it into slices of liver sausage. Agreed. <laughs> That's my favorite scene in the movie as well. And that, well, probably a combo of that, and then when his wife comes for groceries later, and they're like slicing her meat up with the same thing, and it's like, <laughs> oh god, <laughs> I love it. Uh, I like the part, which of course I guess is the reference that inspired the movie, where she's just like uh, going up to the video store. And uh, asking about that R rating, is there nudity? And it's like, no, it's just for violence. And it's like, oh, okay, that's good for the kids. Yeah. That's, that's my second favorite because she's got this baby in her fucking hands. Oh, and, and, and he's crying in the fucking store while, uh, while she's looking at the shit. And then she asks about this movie, it's R rating. She, she's like, cool, I'll bring it home. See, I guess that's the only inaccuracy in the scene is in real life. It was like a toddler that she just had <laughs> yeah. by the hand, which actually I think makes it more fucked up. So he kind of pulled the punch on that weirdly, even though. Uh, I, I keep uh, I keep remembering the scene from Clerks where the girl, or the woman's like, come up there with her kid to rent the video, and he's like, oh, hold on, he reads off all these porn titles. Yeah. And he's like, well, this one you're looking for, a uh, happy, scrappy uh, hero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then it's just a string of the most fucked up porn titles that I could think of at the time. But I, I did want to make one thing, no, before I go, and I'll probably make the statement again on the other one, because it's the same basic thing. If you see these films, and there are films like this being done and distributed today, your Anhedinia films, your uh, like your Death Toilets, or even a little bit higher value with your Sterling, uh, with your David Sterling productions, or your uh, like Things, Things, the Third Things movie is still fairly hard to get, and the fact that it's not named Things Three also screws with you uh these things you know you never know when or if these films are going to stay in print so if you find them and you think that there's a remote chance you might like it you might want to grab it before it's gone grab it up just you know the house shark in walmart today it might not be there tomorrow <laughs> ladies and gentlemen the one thing that i go by the mo most is if i have the money for it right there right there and then i i i spot it i, I spot it there, uh, right there and then because oftentimes i will find uh, uh, if i don't uh i will regret it uh, later on uh, because uh, 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 then I second that like like I mentioned man some of those camp ones like fucking wood chipper massacre I saw that at 13 bucks Hastings passed it up like three times and just bought other bullshit 
Now that's one that is like, I think it's like $110 or something. The video <laughs> stores are just, uh, they're disappearing. I mean, if you got one, you, you need to, well, I can't, you can't really do it now, but once they're open, support them. Yeah. Yeah. Do it for sure. And, you know, at least get out there and watch this stuff. That, that That's one thing that I, I find, especially with video violence, I get, I've gotten a good reaction out of a lot of people that normally wouldn't watch these type of horror movies, you know, but I think the idea, the whole gimmick of video violence is kind of a, a fun selling point that gets them into it. And then it's like, oh shit, these guys are making snuff films. And then Howard and Eli kind of <laughs> will really sort of sell them on it, you know? And it's one I've showed to several people. And if you have it or you have access to it with that YouTube clip, show it to other people too. Tag your friends that might like it. It's a good time. Mm -hmm. All right. It's an entertaining film, and I recommend it for you people that are out there as well. So uh, definitely check it out when you get a chance. At least give it one to watch. <laughs> for sure. I will, I will give YouTube this. Uh, they don't tend to take down films as much like this because a lot of the companies that are this small don't really care because they I'm just sure this guy's, already done its thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure this guy's happy people are still just watching it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> all righty uh, this has been a good time guys thanks for doing this with me. i mean this is one of those movies that'll it, it'll always be important to me you know just because it shows that you can go out there and just do your own fucking thing obviously the video rental market doesn't exist like it used to back then but there's still like the video on demand or like you know online rentals or sales of your movie digitally that you can do and you can make a fair amount releasing something physically. You can still do movies like this today. And I think that's awesome. You know? So watch it and be inspired to do your own shit at some point. Looks like the person who did the music behind this film was Gordon Obsview. Obs, Obsu. And I guess he uh, had, was behind Video Violence too. And Yeah, I'm it's a very similar that. score. Uh, we didn't really touch on that, but the score is like some beautiful, like Wave Race '64 music. So you should fucking oh, definitely yeah. listen to it too. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the next film we'll have to definitely cover the score because uh, that's a that's a whole out uh, score right there. Oh yeah. Uh, but this one, you know, it's definitely the type of music you would buy a jet ski to. But at oh, the same yeah. time, it's <laughs> amazing. You know, it just fits. I think. So yeah, All don't right. buy a jet ski. It's probably a bad investment. <laughs> On that note, ladies and ge uh, gentlemen, uh, men, uh, let, let us uh, see who we are, so that we uh, we uh, so that you know who who we are, each and every one. So Brandon, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and where you, uh, where you're from? Well, I'm Septim Sen of Septim Sen vs. the World. We like physical media here, if you can't tell. And uh, we, we enjoy talking about collecting and moving it. At least for the quarantine, every Monday we do a discussion group, uh, which, again, it might die off after the quarantine is over or be uh, caught back as we do more like ambitious projects as we had in the past. But uh, for the time being... We've got uh, a lot of these things coming up, uh, just continued pickups. Uh, we have a new uh, video game stroll coming at the end of the week. So uh, we've got some uh, fun things up. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you guys always kill it. It's always good <laughs> stuff to watch over there. Mo, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself uh, before we uh, close out the show here? Uh, well, you know, I'm Mosley. I have a channel, Drunken Master Studios. I often do really good videos people seem to enjoy, and then I take a long hiatus while I slack off and fucking watch too many movies to review at once. But, you know, they're all coming out, and it's going to be, like, a big wave of shit here soon. So get up on there and watch that backlog of stuff that you've never checked out in the past and uh, prepare for some new videos. I, I tend to review a lot of low-budget crap and, and, and fun monster movies and... The occasional animated film starting a lot more often here soon. So, oh, I've been riding that tsunami for for a couple of years now, and uh, 
I can't wait to paddle up on the waves again. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's about it for me. Uh, definitely going to be doing more stuff with these guys. And occasionally these guys are, you know, Brandon just joined us over on Happy Hour Comic Club for a Ninja Turtles discussion. That was a good time. Oh, yeah, it was uh, fun. So definitely more of that coming soon. Dave, you're obviously invited for our Secret of the Ooze discussion uh, <laughs> later this week. So. Definitely. Uh, and uh, my name is David Stregi. I am one of the founding fathers of uh, Inside Movies Galore, as well as uh, mo oh, Moonlighting on Delusions of Grandeur, which we are recording on tonight. So uh, definitely check out uh, some of the our past podcasts. I think uh, last week we uh, divvied up some, uh, uh, what was it uh, that we divvied up? last week was alligator and crawl or was that the week before that alligator and crawl was last week it was sir oh sweet so we can crawl out of that fucking disaster and uh <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, those were some great films ladies and gentlemen so check out our podcast sure. uh, uh on both of those uh films those were enlightening for me uh, uh hopefully they were for you and uh, I also do some video pickups and uh, some video reviews of my own. So definitely check out some of those. I just recently delved into some Neil Johnson f uh, film from back in the day. Going to be checking out some uh, more films fr uh, from the guy's re uh, re uh, repertoire. I don't know if you've seen any of these. Alien Dawn or uh, uh, Alien Armageddon or things of that nature. Bipolar Armageddon. <laughs> Names that you might have never heard before. I've watched Aliens versus Rednecks. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds there, like one I need to see. Out there, there are two of those out there. But uh, in any uh, case, definitely check out my channel. I'm definitely uh, going to be coming out with some Bigfoot-like things. Oh, I better not show you that uh, because you might actually <laughs> come over here and shoot me during all this crisis that we are having here. So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, get ready uh, for another exciting discussion that we are going to go, uh, be going into. Uh, and turn on the lights uh, because you might have to get ready for some darkness. So, um, thank you for listening. Have a great day, evening, or morning, wherever you are. Appreciate your time spent here on the page. Like, share, and subscribe. And, uh, over to these motherfuckers page <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. be kind and rewind don't start fucking forest fires either all that new shit <laughs>